Google Earth can be a great tool for getting horizontal curve information out of it. And I'll show an example of how to do this and some of the common horizontal curve information that you may be looking for. So what, what I'll do is I'll start by drawing some lines to help us establish the tangents. And I usually think that's one of the better ways to actually locate the precise beginning and ending of a curve. So I'm just gonna draw along this tangent here, creating one, one line segment, and then I'll draw another one for the other tangent, so somewhere along here. And then we'll use this to establish where our PC and PT is located. If we zoom in here, where we see departure from the tangent should give us an indication that's the starting of the curve or the PC. I'm gonna drag this pen somewhere in this area. And this isn't necessarily the most precise thing to do, and it's because a road gets designed and it gets constructed and there's errors and variations that can happen in that process. So it may be, it may not be as precise as we may hope. And so it really, in most cases, we're looking for a ballpark. Is it a 500 foot radius or a thousand foot radius or 2000? Kind of an order of magnitude perspective on a curve. So this one, let me take a look and see, do we may need to shift this tangent A little bit. I'm going to just delete that one and create a new one here. This center line is a little tricky because it doesn't quite. I think that's a pretty good approximation of where that tangent is. And then so now again, we're looking for the deviation from the center line, and I think that occurs. Somewhere close to where that pen was. I'm gonna say in that area is where we have our PT. So zooming out a bit, what we're talking about is we have a curve that connects these two tangents, going from the PC to the PT. If we wanted to know the length of the curve, we could start at our PC. And of course, the more precise you are here, the closer your estimate will be. That's the curve length. And we can look at the different units here. It's a 529 feet long curve. So the curve length is 529 feet. And again, that could have been a little more precise here and that may change the value slightly. We also know that where the tangents come together is the point of intersection. So if we wanted to label that point, we'd call that the point of intersection. If we wanted to measure the angle between the forward tangent and the back tangent, that'll give us our delta. So from here to here. Our radius and we'll, we'll look at how to measure this a little more precisely, but essentially the, the value we're kind of looking at, and this would be a pretty imprecise process if we were doing it like this, uh, we'd be doing some measurements like this, and this is gonna give you an idea of this is what the radius probably looks like. So maybe it's on the order of several hundred feet. We'll actually do some more precise measuring and not use these. I'm gonna, actually delete these lines. I'm gonna delete our curve length as well. We don't need that. And the process we're gonna to use to measure the radius is the chord method. And so what we need for the chord method is we need to measure a chord and then the middle ordinate of that chord. Now we could start from the, and draw the long chord that goes all the way from the PC to the PT. I tend to think that including those endpoints adds a little bit of variability because it's never a smooth transition from the tangent to the curve and vice versa. So I tend to prefer a chord that's drawn somewhere within the bounds of the PC and the PT 
And this method is only going to work for simple curves. So it won't work for spiral curves. So we got to keep that in mind. And so as I mentioned, we're going to pick two points on the road. Maybe I'll get a point over here and then a point here. So we're going to need this, this length. We'll call it the cord. We need the length of this at so 276 feet is our cord length. So we'll use that in a little while. And what we want to do is about halfway along that cord, we want to measure the middle ordinate. So we need to go about 140 feet along this cord. So that's the point we need to add a pin there. So we know that's about the midpoint of the cord. So we want to make sure we keep keep that point. And what we want to measure is the middle ordinates of the distance at that midpoint of the cord to the center line of the road. So we're going to look for the measurement from this midpoint of the cord over here to the center line of the road. Again, the more precise you can be, the better. Uh, knowing that there are some limitations just with measurements in general. So we'll call that 36.88 feet. And that's what we're going to use in just a minute to determine the radius or estimate the radius for this curve. It's also, if you're unsure about your measurement, you can do several different cords and take multiple measurements of the cord length and the middle ordinate, and then use those to get a sense of how the radius might be changing from one part of the curve to the other and have some confidence in, in your measurement. So let's take a look at how to actually estimate the radius. So we'll use the cord method to estimate the radius of this horizontal curve that we examined. So we're going to start with our equation that relates the radius to that middle ordinate and that cord length that we measured. So if you recall those values, we measured the cord of 276 feet and a middle ordinate of 36.88 feet. So our radius equals 36.88 squared plus one fourth times 276 squared divided by 2 times 36.88. Simplifying that, we'll have the radius equals 1360.13 plus 19,044 divided by 73.76. And we'll come up with a radius of 277 feet. And that actually appears to be fairly close from that very rough estimation we made, just drawing in some lines and measuring those lengths of about 300 feet or somewhere on the order of 300 feet. So a fairly sharp curve, uh, 277 feet for the radius that we've estimated, again, using the cord method.